I've been a storyteller, I think, since I was young. Okay. But now I'm, you know, becoming this teacher, this uh, drum instructor. I'm becoming a mentor. I'm a plant mom. Hey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm becoming now a recording artist, um, a composer. But I'm still anchored in my drums and rhythm. So I'm an all-round musician, a loving human being. Anna Kenya. Those are all incredible titles. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about your family background? Like, where did you go to school? Where did you grow up? Yeah. And things like that. Perfect. So, um, my name is Kasiva Mutua. So, okay. I hail from the family Mutua. Okay. We're four children. I am the last born of four. So, I'm the last of his name, Kasiva no. Mutua. Nice, I'm a last born too. So. Oh, nice. I see how last borns behave. <laughs> Yeah, looking at you, it's kind of like looking at a mirror, you know? Totally. I, I completely yeah. relate. Mm-hmm. I grew up in um, in Nairobi. I studied here, but I was born in Makueni. Okay. Um, and then we moved to the city, and I went to school at Uhuru Gardens Primary School. Shout out, alumni. Uh, yeah. For about eight years. I actually studied in the same school for eight years. And then I went Dedication. to... Dedication. Totally. And then I went to Buruburu Girls Secondary School. Okay. And then went to Uganda for my undergraduate. I studied um, a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism, and I should be the person behind that microphone, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, bitch, <laughs> you, you came to steal my job. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but I grew up a really curious child, you know. Okay. Um, I like listening to sounds, but I like listening to sounds from... Uh, the stories that my grandmother used to tell me. So um, she was a really, really cool storyteller. And she'd tell me all those, you know, folk tales that, you know, every every child used to experience when they were young. And I used to like them so much. But um, I was sort of like a bother because I never had enough. So she sort of came up with a way or a formula to keep me engaged. Okay. And, you know, she, for example, she'd be telling me a story and then she'd be like, yo, Kasiva, do you hear that? I'm like, what? And then she's like, go to the corner and try to listen what's going on there. And then I'd go to the corner and try and listen and listen. And I would hear nothing. Then I'd come back and tell her, Shosho, please stop playing with my mind. And she'd be like, no, 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 go back, go back. It's happening, it's happening. And then I'd go back and try and listen more keenly, listen better. And, you know, with this keen listening, I started hearing sounds. I started hearing so many sounds from the environment. I'd hear the animals breathing. I'd hear maybe somebody cackle in the kitchen, a spoon drop. My mom, like, yell at someone, you know. I'd hear the wind howling in the trees, the crickets at the back. And, you know, where all these sounds sort of crisscrossed in indefinite time, I heard rhythm. So, for example, say I heard somebody laugh. (laughs) Ha ha. And then I heard a spoon drop. And then I had the wind. So those three sounds. We're going to work with those three sounds. Okay. So, okay. Wow. Wow. There we have. We have a song right there. She just created a song that is right before my eyes. I'm Somebody pinched me. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, in indefinite time, you start hearing rhythm. And then I'd go back, um, or I'd go to sleep, I'd try and replicate these sounds um, on my mattress, on my thighs, on my little chest, you know, on my cheeks, like... You know? Wow. And, and, and... And so on and so forth. And, you know, until now, I still use sounds from the environment to inspire my creations and compositions. So that was, that was, that was my childhood. That was how I spent much of my time and not watching cartoons. Actually, I felt like I was kind of an awkward uh, child because, you know, like when we came to Nairobi and I started going to school, um, you know, at four o'clock, like when all the kids like have gone to shower and then cartoon time until like five, um, the little hour between five and six when kids like get out and play Kidogo and then go back home, I really had nothing to say because I was just like <laughs> either watching. There was this program which used to actually come on KBC. It was called Kenyan Rhythms or Kenya Rhythms. It was a compilation of um, 
the Kenya National Music Festival's videos that would be aired on TV. And, you know, I used to love that program so much. So, you know, I'm just like watching Kenya Rhythms and I have nothing to share about Tom and Jerry and the Pink Panther. And so I felt sort of um, kind of, you know, in an awkward place. And I didn't know what to talk about with my friends. So I could say I was um, I was sort of like the weird, quote-unquote, weird child. But look at me now. Look at you now. You're like the curious <laughs> child who never grew up, which is a goal, by the way. Like, totally. So many adults have died, like, a spiritual death. Anyway, and um, so when did you go from having interest in this hobby and now going professional? Like, I am going to be a professional percussionist or a drummer. Yeah. So, um... So in school, I mean, I, I I went to school, to primary school, like most of the kids. But then, you know, in school, I used to just hit everything and anything I could find. I have to admit that I stole two spoons from home and I used to keep them in my backpack. <laughs> and and these spoons were used at lunchtime to sort of like play on my desk. And by the time I was finishing school, man, like my desk was so chipped. It looked like a piece of firewood. <laughs> So I had to buy a new desk before I left school. Okay. But wow. any yeah, but anyway, I mean, I used to play anything and everything and um just was just continued with my curiosity. And then um fast forward to high school and you know, I'm starting to really really understand okay, what's going on. I know for sure that I really like beating things, but I really never understood like what the core was. And I remember the first time I walked into church um, in high school and I had, you know, like um, the rest of the school singing. And then there was this girl playing drums at the front of the church and I was completely transfixed, you know, just looking at her. And I thought, my goodness, that is what I want to be. And I remember telling myself, this is what you want to be, Kasiva, right? And then I could hear myself answer and say, oh, yes, this is this is it. This, this is, is it, is guys, it. you know? Yeah. And I just looked at her and she was, like, really, really passionate about it. And then after service, I went to her. I was really scared because I was I was a Form 1. And, you know, like, um, in most schools, Form 1s have to carry themselves in a certain way. You have to be, like, almost, um, almost not present. But I gathered myself and I went to her and introduced myself and she told me her name was Michelle Maguero shout out to Michelle wherever she is um and I asked her if I could play with her and she said you know we could rehearse the next uh week and then play together on Sunday and she was really welcoming and she took me in you know and I practiced with her and then you know we used to play together it was really really nice having support from a senior in school and then um, she was in Form 4, I was in Form 1, so she had to leave. She finished her exams and left. And I remember what, before she left, she was like, um, I'm passing down the mantle, uh, the drum mantle to you. You're going to be the Aww. official drummer of Buru Buru Girls Secondary School. Shout out to everyone. And then that was it. I was the official drummer. So I started my thing. I would play the Kenya National Anthem on Fridays at Parade. And then... Um, now, I think my journey with drums truly started. And um, I, I, I actually decided to go for the Kenya National Music Festivals, as I used to see when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah, so um, I went for the music festivals. I went for the drama festivals and registered, you know, for... I remember the first year I went for the Kenya National Music Festival, something... Um, completely amazing like happen okay not amazing in a good way but like just quite shocking and sort of you know just remains as a mark in my drumming life okay. so I go and register for the competition I'm going for the solo uh category competition yeah mm -hmm. so I go and register and then um a certain guy from some school came and asked me hey hey um are you lost and you know, I started self-doubting for a sec because why would somebody ask me if I was lost? And I asked him, um, isn't this the drumming, the solo drumming category? And then he was like, yeah, 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 it is. And then I told him, for sure, for sure, then I'm not lost. But then, you know, coming to think of it now, I see why. Um, why would you ask him? <laughs> I see why, I see why he would choose to ask me um, 
why I thought I was lost because you know it's not normal to actually see a girl playing drums okay. and and now I understand I mean back then I didn't understand it was just like why is he asking me if I'm lost or is it like a line to start talking to me <laughs> You it's know, like, why is this girl on the football pitch? <laughs> oh my goodness. Exactly. So, um, I go for the competition and it's my turn to play and I arrange my drums, introduce myself. But you know, the fact that I think I freaked out so much because I didn't see, first of all, I think subconsciously, I never really realized that I hadn't truly seen any woman play drums before. And also as I was growing up, I couldn't see any representation. Okay. And that's why now I feel like representation is truly important because once you see an example... You know that, how far you can go. Exactly. And you feel like if somebody has done it, then I can do it too. But when it's you breaking the ground, it's a bit scary. It's it's fearful for some reason. So I went and um, played drums and I freaked out so much in, in between. And I remember the drums just flew out of my hands and landed on the judges' table. And no. I was just like, I knew it was done, you know. I just I just stood up and ran outside and went to weep in the field. Oh and I never went back. I knew I was last for sure because that's such a grave mistake, you know, in the competitions. But um, the next year, I went back. And this time, I went back with hand drums because I thought to myself, what a wise lady I am. That, <laughs> that um, since I go with hand drums, I, my hand cannot, you know, like snap from my shoulder and like land on the judge's table. So now I have control. I have control. And I thought that was like pure genius. So I went back this time. I played. I think I did not make it to go to the nationals. I went back in form three, went to the nationals, but got defeated in the nationals. And then I went back in form four. And this was such a risk because, you know, in your fourth year, you're expected to be studying and no extracurricular activities. You know how it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah and the, just the fact that you were doing this on your own as a solo. Exactly. So you're like your own cheerleader. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Wow. So I went back when I was in Form 4 and I was like, you know, I have to get this this time. You know, it's been a long time coming. Um, it had gotten so intense. The competitions had gotten so intense that um, when I was in Form 3, um, some certain guy from a certain school would write me letters and tell me, you know, I'm waiting to see you at the festivals, yo. Like, it was like raw and war. And I was just like, what? Why is this so serious? Why is it so important, you know? And then, you know, I went I went back at form, uh, when I was in Form 4 and um, played the competitions, went for the nationals. And, of course, at the nationals, like, as usual, there were no women there. I was the only woman. And, you know, just competing with um, gentlemen from other... Back then, we had provinces, not counties. So, you know, competing with gentlemen from, like, Nyanza province, Western province, you know. These people are, like, they grow up with these instruments, so they're very, very seasoned. Okay. And I, I sort of felt intimidated because... Um, I didn't live in the village and I didn't grow up in the village exposed to my culture in that sense. So I felt kind of intimidated, but um, I was determined because I was actually doing a lot of research, listening to a lot of African music. So I went, did my thing, and I was first in the country. Wow. When I was in Form 4, that was quite something. Yeah. African mother <laughs> thinks and you say we need to talk. Either you're pregnant, yeah. dying, or going to jail. Yeah, totally yeah. so. <laughs> I asked, um, so, I mean, of course I wasn't pregnant, but I told her I just needed to see her. And we met somewhere, and I told her, you know what, uh, mom, I finished my studies, I did really well, um, but I think I want to become a musician. And of course she was shocked. If I was in her shoes, I would be shocked as well. Um, why would you go to school for four years and then finish and say you want to become a musician, you know? And I understand why she was quite skeptical, but um, she's a very prayerful woman, and I could see that she just wanted to pray for me at the moment, you know? Aww. And then um, I just told her to trust me and to have a little bit of faith in me because this is what I wanted to do, and not even for the money, it's just because it made me so happy. Okay. And I think, yeah, each and every parent wants the, the children, best for their children. They want the, the children to be happy. Right. Topmost to be happy. Even no matter before. what that means. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the fact that I was happy, I think she was really happy that that made me happy. So 
she still had faith in me and she has a lot of faith in me now because I finally I finally showed her, you know, what it was that I wanted to know. I think now she's really proud. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thumbs up, Mama Kasiva. <laughs> Before we continue getting to know Kasiva a little bit better, I would like to let you know that she has just released her new EP, which came out last Friday on the 25th. And her EP is titled Ngewa, which she told me means a story. And uh, before she tells us a little bit more about her EP, let's delve into one of her songs, which is called Uhuli Ranga. And it is the second song on her track list. Here goes. I'm not sure what all the words mean to the lyrics, but I think it was a great musical expression of what it means to be African. Um, if you're just joining us right now, this is the show Kenyan Artist with your host, Jay Napondo. And our guest of the day is an international star and percussionist, Kasiva Mutua. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about what Umuhuliranga means? I hope I'm, I'm saying this right. <laughs> No, you're not, you're not getting it right. It's <laughs> Uhuliranga. Uhuliranga. Yeah. Can you tell us what does Uhuliranga mean and what's the inspiration behind the story? So Uhuliranga is actually Lulia. Okay. And uh, my good friend Makinde, Mutsendi, shout out, um, helped me write this, this, this song. Um, he lyricized everything. So Uhuliranga Mwananja Iwe means, are you listening, my child? Uhuliranga Nyimba Anga Iwe means are you listening to what i'm singing about and the song pays homage to all the parents but just the community because in an african setting a child is, does not belong to a family a child belongs to the community and it sort of looks at parenting how we bring up the young ones mm -hmm. in in an african context what kind of values do we instill in them um do we choose to let them play PS5s or do we take them to the village during the holidays to learn a bit about our culture and just stay connected to their roots? Um, is it that a neighbor can not instill discipline to your child or they can't? You know, it just looks at the perspective of parenting and how we parent now versus how maybe parenting techniques were in the past. Okay. It just looks very extensively about parenting because you know i remember when i was tiny and you know a parent would ask you can, kasiva, kasiva, can you hear are you listening are you, why are you not listening and you know like somebody's like you, why are you not listening you know right so i just remembered that and i thought maybe i should actually pay homage to this the way we parent the way we bring up the young ones and you know in the perspective of community then what are our values in terms of bringing up children? Okay, yeah. that's amazing. And just by listening to your musical arrangement, your vocals, your ad-libs, the ululations, I mean, you can tell like how much work it took to put into this production. Yeah. Um, what does your creative process look like? Wow, so percussion to me comes very naturally. Um, and especially when I just, you know, like switch on that switch for keen listening. I can get inspiration from anywhere and everywhere. Like, it's almost dead silent in the studio right now, but I can hear, you know, the seat I'm sitting on is creaking, like when I turn left and right. I can hear such subtle sounds that people don't hear usually, you know? Wow. And that you know, that helps me create. That helps me put in some, you know, textures and colors because I tend to see music like that. I tend to see music in textures and in colors. It's very strange how to explain this happens, but yeah. Um, I can look at a song and see earth and rough and dark brown, grayish, and I can see maybe loud. I can see loud in colors or textures. So, Well, then... guys, she's got a superpower. <laughs> so I... Um... Once I see that, then that determines the kind of drum or the kind of instrument that I'm going to use to sort of lay the, the, the bottom layer of the song. And the bottom layer um, is what drives the song. If you listen to this EP in Gewa, you're going to hear that each and every song has this one bottom thing that sort of anchors everything. And that's okay. just, that's, that's my style of doing things. It just anchors everything and holds everything in place. It's sort of like that person in the family who roots everybody together. 
whether okay. it's the mom, the papa, the uncle, the auntie, that the one base, person. The base, the yeah, foundation. There's a foundation. Uh-huh. And then everything is layered on top. So I put the foundation and the foundation has to be very, very solid. Just like when you're building a structure, it has to be very solid. And then whatever else comes on top just almost automatically rests very well. So okay. then I know, after the foundation, I know what to put next. And then after that, I add, I add, I add, until maybe my producer tells me, okay, Kasiva. Enough. <laughs> it's enough. Stop. It's enough. <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say that I'm super proud of you on your evolution. Guys, once upon a time, I met Kasiva on a Lion King stage. We did a musical in Tanzania at the Serengeti during the wildebeest migration. It was incredible. You know, I was a vocalist. She was part of the band. And I am just so happy to see you grow and evolve from playing to composing your own music right now. Like, it's incredible. Hands up, tops, up, tops. Thank you so much. (laughs) And which takes me to the next question. Like, what was your turning point? Like, when did you have your light bulb moment when you're like, you know what? I could actually compose my own music. Like, when did this happen or how did this happen for you? So this happened for me during the pandemic. Okay. Very unfortunately or fortunately, because I know a lot of stuff happened for different people during the pandemic. There's a lot of loss. There was an air of grief and sadness everywhere. And um, this actually made it even more difficult for me to compose because as a human being, I could relate with what is happening in the world. But also during the pandemic, um, I got the much needed time to just sit by myself and look deeply into my life and in my mind and I discovered that I had stored so much knowledge it was almost like I had been touring for about eight nine years and I really never got a break to actually look from an outside eye and just see all this stuff that I was learning all these drums that I was collecting all these shakers that I was buying and the, the pandemic period, just being locked away at home, gave me the much needed time to just decompress and sort of sort out my my files, you know? Okay. I'll just call them files. Just sort out my files and just sort of like arrange things as they are. And, you know, as I was doing this, then um, I started seeing so much, so many elements that have sort of contributed into the person that I've grown to now because the percussionist that I was when you met me at the Serengeti is not the same person I am right 